these 12 fills are from 12 great songs, and I believe every drummer should be able to play every one of these. Now, some of these you've probably heard, and some of them you probably haven't heard, but you'll be a better drummer for learning them. Here we go. Hey everyone, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. I believe that no matter who you are, you can master the drums when you're armed with the right know-how. And I believe this video is gonna get you on the right track for doing just that. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe before you go. First, I've got to preface today's discussion by reminding you that my goal is not just to teach you some licks and teach you some fills. That's not what I want to do, because I want to help you get better at chord drumming skills, and I want to give you the abilities to create your own fills. So what I want to do is give you some specific reasons why to practice this fill and some, some benefits you'll receive by practicing these fills. But ultimately, I hope that you're going to be inspired by working on these fills. They're going to boost your technical skills, of course, but I hope that they'll inspire you to create new fills of your own because that's ultimately what we want to do as drummers. We don't want to just regurgitate fills, we want to create our own. So I hope that's what today's lesson helps you do. Also, be sure to download the PDF in the description that has all 12 of these fills nicely notated for you to see so that you can take that to your practice room and work on these. All right, let's get rolling. Number 12, The Power of Love by Huey Lewis and the News. So this is the fill that happens kind of at the end of the bridge when things chill down a little bit, but then this fill launches the song into the guitar solo. So it's what I call a slingshot fill, where something about it, it just kind of feels like we're going and we're just launching the band. Fills like that are really cool. And it's also not the easiest fill to play because it incorporates space and it's an easy fill to rush. In practicing this, you learn to play precisely, you learn to play with some space, and you learn to relax because you've got to relax to play this fill well. Number 11, Hold On by Alabama Shakes. This is a really cool song that came out back in 2012. This was such a cool album, just a unique sound that this band had going on. So there's a particular fill that's near the end of the song where basically the drummer plays over the bar line. So it isn't just a fill that ends on beat one. It keeps going, it starts on beat three and it continues across into the next measure and lands on beat two. So fills like that are really practical to practice because you want to free yourself up from that default finishing on beat one. You want to be able to play across the bar line. So practicing this fill is going to help you do just that. Number 10, Africa by Toto. There's a big fill that happens going into the first chorus of the song. It's just a big epic tom fill. And it's a tough fill to play because these tom notes are happening on syncopated parts of the beat and they're just out there on their own. Uh, there's not really a frame of reference for you as the drummer, so you've got to precisely hit things at the right time. This is great practice for playing with space and relaxing and making sure you're being precise. Also something to note is that this fill happens on top of the percussion drum loop that goes throughout the beginning of the song. And so there's sort of that that's forming a, a bed of sound for this fill. And so the fill by itself isn't really what's happening. It's really happening on top of this other part. But you as the drummer, if you're performing this song, you're just going to play this tom part and you're going to launch into the chorus. Number nine, Sign of the Times by Harry Styles. So this is a really cool, just epic rock ballad that came out a few years ago. And it's an interesting fill for two reasons. Number one, it mixes triplets with straight eights. So practicing this is gonna force you to really uh, get those subdivisions comfortable in your head, because you've gotta be able to play 
uh, eighth note triplets in the midst of also playing eighth notes. And so you've got to really feel that quarter note strongly. So it's a great thing to practice. But also what makes this feel so cool and so musical is the nuance here. The fill is actually pushing. It's actually rushing a little bit and we're hitting the downbeat of the chorus a little bit early so that then the chorus can lay back. And so there's that whole feel aspect of this fill. So be sure to check out the recording of this so you can really hear that. Here in my demonstration, you'll hear me doing a little bit of that. I'm gonna push it a little bit and lay back the chorus. Number eight, Ain't Supposed to Rain by Welshley Arms. This is such a cool fill because it's almost functioning as part of the riff. It's like part of the riff of the song and it's a recurring fill. It shows up with slightly different voicings and slightly different um, components of the drum set. But roughly this rhythm shows up throughout the song and it fits with the guitar riff, it fits with the melody. It's just a very melodic drum part that feels so musical and it's so fun to play. So practicing something like this is going to help open up your ear to just weird fills that you wouldn't have thought to play otherwise and that are very specific to a song because your fills that you're creating need to be inspired by the music and by the melody and the riff. And this is an example of one of those. So pay careful attention to that relationship so that you can learn to create fills like this yourself that fit a particular riff or melody. Number seven, Last Christmas by Wham. And it's a very drum machine kind of pattern. It was probably a drum machine they used on the record. And there's a particular fill that shows up throughout the song, but we're really looking at a specific instance of it in verse two, where it's interesting how this recurring fill fits so well with the melody in this particular spot. So that's what I want you to go check out. But this fill, number one, is, is kind of challenging to play it exactly like what's on the recording. And so you'll hear me play two versions of it. The first version is me emulating exactly what I hear on the recording. The second one is how I would probably actually play it if I were playing this on a gig. Number six, Easy by the Commodores. So this is one of those songs that if you've played much in cover bands, you've probably played it at some point. And it's a fill that's very simple, but it's hard to play well. And it generally comes at the end of a measure of rest because it cues the chorus or it cues the band in at the beginning. This is a recurring fill that shows up throughout the song. And so in order to play it well, you have to make sure that you're starting it at exactly the right moment at the end of three. This fill starts at the end of three after silence and then you've got to cleanly go into a downbeat. And so it's such a simple fill, but tough to play precisely. And so by learning this, you're going to work on tightening things up, making it feel right, making sure you're cueing the band in as you should, but also helping you be more okay with space. Number five, this is a really fun one. This is one of those drum intros that's just really cool. Rock With You by Michael Jackson. So at the beginning, it's kind of this rudimental, like Motown drum machine hybrid kind of drum part that cues the band into the intro of the song. And it's so cool. And it combines some doubles with a flam. And we're also hitting the kick in the midst of that. It's a very linear based fill. If you've never heard it before, it's super cool. So go check it out and start practicing it because it's gonna force you to incorporate doubles smoothly into a fill and incorporate a flam smoothly and solidly into a fill. And so this is one that you've got to work slowly, but by practicing it slowly, getting it up to speed, number one, is very satisfying to master this fill because it's so much fun to play, but it's going to force you to work a lot of these technical hand elements too in a really musical way.
Number four, this would not be a drum video on YouTube talking about fills without mention of Phil Collins in the air tonight, which of course is a great fill. And it's not exactly the easiest fill to play well either because it's kind of a linear thing where we've actually, we're going back and forth between toms, whether it's roto toms or it's my two rack toms, going back and forth between the toms and then the kick filling in the spaces. And at this tempo that the song is at, it's not exactly easy to do that smoothly. And so if you're gonna play this fill exactly like it is on the record, you've gotta practice it slowly to get that alternation very smooth. Otherwise it gets sloppy very quickly. This is also the kind of fill where I would probably play it one way on a gig, but that isn't exactly the way Phil Collins does it on the record. But I only have two toms. He had a lot of toms set up. So you'll see two variations of this. Basically me playing it more according to the record, even with my two tom set up, and then me just spicing it up a little bit the way I think it feels better when it's just a two tom setup since I don't have a whole bunch of toms at my disposal. By the way, in a moment, we're gonna talk about another famous drum fill that was partly inspired by In The Air Tonight. We'll get there in a minute. Number three, three. Number three, Hallelujah by Paramore. So this is a really cool song, and basically I feel this in halftime where we're counting fast, but really most of the time we're playing backbeats on beat three. Uh, that's the way I decided to notate it for you. And so in this fill, we're actually playing quarter note triplets. So we're playing triplets that stretch across the second half of the measure. And this is one of those slingshot kind of fills, kind of like in Power of Love. And in this case, we're launching from sort of a chill groove that caps off the verse into just a big driving chorus. And so the whole fill just feels like a kind of a launch sort of thing that feels really cool. And so practicing this forces you to really get your subdivision together because we're going back and forth between quarter notes uh, and actually eighth notes too, as well as the quarter note triplets. And so it's hard to play it precisely, but by practicing this, you're gonna really work those subdivisions and you're gonna learn a fill that really helps propel a song. And I hope it encourages you to create other fills like this and be creative with just weird feeling fills. Number two, this is a really unique fill that I've always loved. It's from the song No Such Thing by John Mayer from one of his older albums from the early 2000s. The first time they go into the chorus in the song, there's just a break. There's a break on the end of four, measure of silence, basically a simple fill at the end of that. But then going into the second chorus, they do this fill that sounds really cool because it's basically snare 16th notes, but there are accents thrown in in the midst of snare ghost notes, which is super cool, super musical. This is really cool and it's gonna force you to work on a lot of different things, honestly, but it's gonna force you to work on controlling your rebound because if you're playing a bunch of snare sixteenths with some accents, but also with ghost notes, you've gotta control that rebound and be able to quickly go back and forth between big stick height, little stick height, rim shot, ghost note. So being able to play that precisely is very challenging, playing this cleanly. So practicing it slowly and really working on controlling that rebound is what you've got to do to master this fill, but it's well worth doing because this is going to help you with playing all sorts of other kinds of fills like it. So this is very worth practicing. All right, number one, one of the most famous drum parts and a drum part that really helped contribute to a particular song in 1982 being a big hit song for this particular artist 
Jack and Diane by John Cougar Mellencamp, Kenny Aronoff on drums. This is a really cool fill and it's a really challenging fill and it's a very difficult one for me to create with my only two toms here. So you'll see me do the best I can. This is one where I added a variation of how I would play it if I'm doing it on this kit versus trying to recreate what's on the record where there's a lot of toms. Honestly, the biggest reason for learning this fill is just because it's cool. Learn it, figure it out because it's cool. But also, it's like a lot of these fills, it's helping solidify your, your ability to subdivide because you've got to play sixteenths and then some eighths and then some triplets and then from there launch into a straight groove. And so it's just a whole mix of all this stuff that is very difficult to just smoothly execute without significant practice. And so it's all helping solidify your ability to feel the different subdivisions, whether it's triplets or straight eights, in the midst of a steady quarter note pulse. So it's a really fun, really musical groove, really well worth learning. So I really hope you enjoy working on this one. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it provided you with a lot of value and I hope you enjoy practicing these fills and I hope that practicing these fills helps you with building a lot of other fundamental skills on the drums. I hope you're able to take these, run with them, be inspired, create new cool fills of your own. Have a lot of fun practicing these. Be sure to go download the PDF in the description where all the notation is laid out clearly for you to see. So you can take that to your practice room and really dig in. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you on the next video.